still fits our strategy. Um, and then it becomes musical lanes, right? Like, you keep moving your lanes until you get Necro vs. Kunkka. They're gonna get Ember. This piece bought them. And now Viking are gonna realize what's going on here. And now they have a choice to make. How much do we help Toby? He's oh. actually dead now. Yeah, well, Cask is coming, I believe. Fissure first. They don't even need it. Just the body blocks are more than enough. He's gonna pop the Fairy Fire as well, despite being dead. Mo <laughs> Carry Witch Doctor, Cinder. And you, you're saying you've never seen that. Even as a support, carrying I've seen the core game. Witch Doctor. No, that's oh not boy, he might oh, be no, dead no. again. Oh TPs my are God. coming. And he's just super dead. This time it does go to Nico, okay. baby. But that stayed here, though. I think, yes. especially okay. now that Shaker has rotated off, Toby's back to the lane getting level 2, and Clockwork's here now with almost level 3. That's a nasty hero to play Witch Doctor against in lane, by the way. You get caught, you're in trouble. Um, well, they, I'm they keeping, can play this oh, lane. Oh, they're going to go on him again. In the bot lane, Maledict to follow, but he gets the Ghost route off. He skilled at level so 2. He'll be fine. That's maybe not what you want, but it's what you need. Survive. Yeah. I think it's okay. He has loads of regen because he, you know, just died twice, so he didn't get to use any of it. Oh, top <laughs> so. lane. No, they don't layer the stuns very well, but ES is here with the Fissure. Just yeah. make sure they know he is here. Uh, bot lane again, Toby getting completely drained of mana. Okay. And that is another kill for Nico, baby. That's three deaths for your Necro early on. Swell for them in the early laning stage. And after seeing it happen, I don't think it should. <laughs> but that's how it goes sometimes. They take an opportunity, they they see the, the chance to do it, and it, it works out. They've pulled it off wonderfully here. Now even going into Aram is the perfect count cask bounce. Ooh. Maledict is still there. And he will tick away. So that is a second Damn. kill for FNG. Shad could have manned up there instead of backing down. I think he could have just stayed on top of the queen, forced her to blink away. He had 19 sticks. There's no way he dies there. Toby is in a lot of trouble again. Pops the Ghost Shroud. Completely mana drained again. And again, a kill. The Alliance should be very happy right now. Their win condition is doing awesome. Their mid lane is winning. S4 is doing fine. He's not owning, but I don't think he can expect to against this dual lane uh, with a Shaker support. But overall, the pieces are coming together nicely. It's still less than a 1k We're going to have though. the boat, Cinder Man. It does hit boom. It's fine. No, nope. oh! that was a range creep. Oh, he was fine, Cinder said. And he died literally half a second later. He was not. The caster fine. curse is true to its word. FNG in the bot lane now, getting chased by Aramis. So finally, a kill going the way of Viking. Yeah. It's going to take some heavy damage. It's a long that time for that. Live. Battle Fury was not a thing on AM, like even back to Dota 1. Was there a brief time where... Oh my god, okay, well Fissure's gonna take out Venge in the top lane. Th there was a time in Dota 2, actually, where the common build for a short while was Vanguard Manta. Ugh. Oh yeah, I actually do remember that. And at some point, I people were going... stronger then, to make him miss his timing, even if it cost them their own. Uh, that's good stuff. Oh no. Limp. Not gonna be seeing this one coming. Yeah. He's in He's trouble. around it right now. Inside Cox does hit the torrent, and Ghost Ship is on its way. I think this is enough. FNG is here to help out as well. The cask will not bounce more than once. Doesn't look like the courier will fall. Limp continuing to get buffed with this ship. It's about to end now, so he's gonna tick down. But FNG, it will cost him his life. X marks onto the ember. Limp has to be oh, careful Aramis. though. Another Cogs into battery assault, and down he goes. So great transition here from Viking. Oh, you do get it at six. Okay. He has an empty well, he skill. Uh, he has an right unspent now. skill point. So he could skill it right now, if he wants. Oh, there's the Eclipse. The Creep Wave is going to tank a bit of it, but the damage has been done. So Viking, another kill to their name. So somewhat weak. Actually, Toby they bought the Mana Boots. Not too long ago. He's bought the Arcane Boots, so he's going Greaves and... Top lane, Cinderman. Queen oh, of Pain shit. dies, and the tier 1 tower. Continue your thought process, please. Yeah, so this is a choice. I'm not fully confident that this is the best item he could buy, uh, but it's there's a very good reasoning for doing it, at least. Bottom lane, Toby. Oh, yeah. He looks oh, to Good hook oh, shot. Yeah, Aramis with a nice hook shot onto the ES. You're seeing how hard that counters the hero. He's just stuck inside, and Toby will live as a result of this rotation. Maybe a little bit of an over-rotation, though. They require two TPs. The Ember Spear is not kind of stuck down here. S4 taking heavy damage in the top lane in the meantime. Magic Missile not quite there, but the swap into the Magic Missile Lucent Beam combo. Oh, and Viking looking it? very good now. Why did he not on level one? 
And that's a while ago. It's been a long time. Oh, Toby's in trouble. Oh, well, he Toby. does a ghost shot again. He does, but the boat's going to do extra damage now. Death Ward to follow once it's done. It's enough. And it will be enough. Hook shot a little bit too late, but it might be a... A kill here either way for the clockwork, so they get something out of it at least. So one for one, but definitely in favor of Alliance there. Here one tower being pressured, but Ember Spirit. Now, who... And... Found like a blink from AM. I guess he blinked away. He saw that Celador was incoming. Torrent will connect into the fissure, into the boat, into death. So Alliance do get something out of it, not the next. I think it's good that he's making moves, but I I can't help but feel like Alliance haven't brought the correct number of heroes when they've made moves. Bottom lane. Ghost Shroud is there, but here's a counter initiation from Aramis. Not able to really hit the hook shot though. Wave of Terror shows that Witch Doctor's in the tree. Sonic Wave onto three heroes. Death Ward to follow. Vengeful Spirit's taking the brunt of the damage. Necker ult, not quite enough to take out S4. As there is now an Echo Slam onto the Soul Ember Spirit, who goes very aggro onto S4, but not enough to get the kill still. Zero kills in this fight somehow. And here they start to fall. So Witch Doctor's the first. Nice swap there for Toby to stay alive. Magic Missile. Not enough to really do any heavy damage to Limp, so it's a one for one, a Witch Doctor for an Ember. Combinations, like, if you find this item together with something else, or you find it when you're playing this exact hero. Like, let's say, an item like Essence Ring, the old Essence Ring, let's say it had a win rate of 53%, you'd be like, that's pretty balanced, but then its win rate on IO was 80. Is it a balanced <laughs> item then, right? Like, if that's how it was, like, just to put it on edge. Yeah, um, no, that's true. It's, it's hard to, to really quantify easily, I think. You can't just flat out look at win rates, either. Hanskin's dead. Oh, oh they are Reaper! Yeah, nice Reaper's one. up in two seconds, so he is in range now. Good. There we go, that's gonna be the first Reaper kill of the, the day. He's pretty far from dagger. It's 19 minutes in, he has 1,000 to go. Viking are hitting all of the timings right now of their lineup. They're gonna start running at more and more towers, while AM has to keep working on that Battle Fury. We'll get bullied away here by Luna TP, so... Oh, Aramis. Yep, hook shot in. They know that somebody hook. TP'd out already, so this is going to be an easy kill on the Witch Doctor. See if they can turn this around on the blimp as well. S4 does have Sonic Wave available. It's going to scream and pay first into the Sonic onto two. Toby is super healthy, though. BKB pop from Limp. That is the 10-second one. And it feels like it was used for almost... Oh, okay, Mana Void. That is definitely enough to kill the old Clockwork. Oh. Uh, pretty good outcome for Alliance. They obviously take advantage of Nico Baby's split push, seeing the Necro, which is nice. But it's also a way for AM to stay on top of Luna. The move speed slow is important for him to be able to lock her down. Alternatively, you could have got something like an Abyssal or a uh, Butterfly. But again, the added benefit is the counter to Necro and the health pool to Ember. lane, Limp. He's gonna pop his ult. He's gonna get swapped with the BKB active. And he's going to be brought down very easily. In fact, they're going to use the Reaper arm just for that extra death timer. I mean, is there a point in the game where they just can't handle Anti-Mage? Mm. Or do they have the heroes to deal with him when it gets to the, the late game? Oh, wait, what, what was that? Which just doctor? Some, the hero needs multiple items um, under to really pack a punch. And he, he's having a good game, Nico. It's not that. Bottom it's, oh, this, is, this is a good kill. Death. Yeah, a good nice combo kill. here. Mana Void was expended. That is a level three Mana Void. He's to do. Always keep them on their toes to get back to defend. They're yep, the joys of AM, as Luna will lose the Aegis now. AM very, or uh, Alliance very clearly playing split push style. Uh, very, that's a very clear strategic call of how and then right. his opportunity is gone. So, I kind of like the Shadow Blade actually. It's it's good. Both that and Force, I would have been happy with. S4 running into Celery. Going forward. Link, Toby oh my here God, though. Celery just swapping there. Yules. BKB is available for Boom. Necro ult is not enough to actually get the kill, but he actually will blink out to safety. No, Ember ends up finishing him off the old-fashioned way. And with that, Alliance is light Ooh, as well. They might want to try to jump him here. Celery is in a really good position, though. Boom can actually flat-out bait this, and so can Shad. He's going to. They got the Necros. The Echo Slam to follow the... No, oh, no, the gun is still! To actually save him. Mana Void finishes him off, but he's going to buy back into the game. Still has the Eclipse, of course. AM jumps in with that BKB. Looks like he's going to take out the Vengeful Spirit. Hook shot to follow. Nico Baby trying to run away now. Damn. See if they can chase this. This is very important considering the buybacks came out. A nice fissure there from oh. Hanskin. Blocking the neutral creeps. I'm so very surprised important. Chad died there, actually. 
the celery was a little bit slow on the swap, so shat differently if that didn't happen. Possibly. It's not for sure. Oh, S4 is in trouble here. Maybe. Yep, he's in trouble. Yeah, they have the swap. No, they don't need it, looks like. It's gonna be the magic missile into the hook shot. <laughs> Just look at Toby walking towards AM as Necro. You don't give a shit, man. Alliance. Like, I have on this. Oh, right now. I don't know about this one, Hanskin. Yeah, he's gonna use his Shadow Blade. He actually uses Echo Slam to very little effect. It does activate the Aeon Ooh. disc. And now the Bio. I think he didn't S4. know there was a disc. I think he genuinely didn't know. I, that that is a non play. Price. That is absolutely a non play. And that ro opens up. See, it's about a half HP. This is the Aegis and Cheese on the line, Nico Baby. Opens up his wand slot to be able to take the Aegis Sonic Wave. I'm sure Mana Void to follow as well. Vengeful Spear is going to be the first to fall. Toby at half HP, but staying alive right now. FNG having a nice Death Ward. Full channel time right now. As the buyback onto the Vengeful Spirit. Now Roshan only with 1200 HP. And here comes the Eclipse with the BKBs activated. Nico Baby jumps in. Reaper Scythe on FNG is not quite enough. But it looks like the Aegis was taken by Shad, who dies immediately, so it gets consumed. Let's see if they can turn this back around, though. Boom. Getting Enchant on by Hanskin. In the meantime, Shad going 1v1 versus Nico Baby, who eats the cheese. Apparently, he picked it up. And that'll be enough for them to oh, good chains. even things out. But triple kill for Boom now on the backside here in the mid lane. Mm. When this tower falls. Yes, that's quite tasty. Kunkka does have buyback. Quap does not. ES also, but he'll be back very soon. Right, well, let's, Echo let's Slam look at is up in 10 seconds, Cinderin. Uh, oh, Arthas. looks like he might get chased down. God. But yeah, these racks are melting. And they're just going to go to for end? throne. I mean, they're forcing a buyback here minimum. Absolutely. Buy they're going to get tier 4s. Yeah, the buyback onto the Kunkka. Yo, are they actually the potential last stand for Alliance right now. FNG gets a nice cast copy. He's getting decimated. Luna in the meantime getting swapped. Pops the BKB. Now finally starting to right click Nico Baby, who jumps in for the kill on the Vengeful Spirit. Mana Void is not enough to actually secure himself a kill. And it looks like that's the death of AM, who buys back into the game immediately. The buildings are being hit by Luna, but there's a counter Echo Slam off to two heroes. Nico Baby still with no Mana Void, just used it recently. Limp extremely low on the Kunkka. Sonic Wave to follow. This might be a defense for Alliance. Two buybacks available as well. Shad, though, huge hook shot from Aramis. And Shad doing just massive damage. And it looks like they will be able to finish off this game one in style. Wow, what an ending. Man. When you just saw it, I had this feeling, should I should I say, can they throw? Turn to pick. I think they need a way to solve Middling. Ember. Unless they put X mid for Limp. Limp yeah, actually plays Core X. Axe, but no, they're not going to do that. But that's a good look for the future of the game, obviously. Um, Shad, like you pointed out, doesn't have the highest CS, but there was also six creeps waiting for him, and he pulled into a big camp. So he's going to end up on like 25 here well, if he gets everything. Earlier, in down it goes. That was the, actually the, the chain mail for S4 as he's working towards his phase boots right now. Going to have to wait another Somebody minute or so. Could stick TP. Is being chased. He bought as much time as possible before doing it. Very nice, actually. Very smart. Blade on the face was just a tad, but not by that much, considering he didn't have enough quite yet for uh, Blades of Attack. Armis bot lane. He's going to get two courier kills. Oh, no. Man, but just waddle on over and get two creep kills. It feels like everybody's just so focused on last hit, they don't even look at the mini map for the courier. I mean, it's also not very common that you look at look at the last hits, right? 38, 31, 30 to 26, 21, 21. Vikings still has the gold lead. Like yeah, that is Alliance cool. are Alliance have actually got so good farm in the lanes, but the couple of courier kills and maybe the extra region they've had to bottle oh, whatever by whatever it is, uh, Viking are, are basically matching them here. And this is a, an alliance draft that wants to lane win, right? FNG, okay, they do get the first blood here. Nico baby is low, but he is safe. Immediately TP's bottom, so let's see if they can set something up here. Oh, they're not expecting this move for sure. Obviously doesn't have a reckoning of souls yet, but does have a level four raise. They actually realized, wait, where did Shadowfiend go? He's not mid and we know he has an invis. He was too... It, it wasn't... How to say... Nico wasn't high enough health that he could go in immediately, so they had to kind of wait. Shad top, they're trying to trade for Celery. They will do it here. One for one. S4 now. 1v1 oh, versus Shad. One more spin Shad would do not it. Interested in oh, this. he's not six. Never mind. But if he would have... Continuing to get a ton of farm. Actually, top of the net worth of the entire game right now. The rune of haste. Get that fast blink next. As he looks to be chased here, boom, with that haste rune right now, Searing Chains is online. 
Looks like they might go for hand skin instead. Inkswell will set things up, but nice cold embrace. Keeping him safe for now. And under the tower, of course, S4 is going to call. Boom, with that remnant, ends up helping taking out the... They have a good shot. And then, uh, obviously, scale very well later on with both their supports. S4 going for the bounty rune. Looks like this is going to be the first team fight of the game, potentially. Boom. A lot of damage being done, and S4 is going to be the first casualty. Boom. Attempting to get up. These right clicks from Shadowfiend are crazy strong, but he's going to be silenced. Lifted as the record was about to go off, and they're going to find the kill as well. So Viking... And gets settled for the small camp, whereas Toby will bully his way to a big camp, basically. Yeah, it looks like Shad is uh, targeting towards getting that Radiance right now, as they're going to apply some pressure to S4. TP support with FNG is here. Gets the Malathus off into oh, the Black, black Hole. Oh, oh, no. But the Ink Swell is enough to cancel it. Very quick succession. And it was actually the Black Hole stolen, as we talked about that pregame. Very easy to do so. S4 getting chased with the first haunt of the game from Shad. Another, so at least a couple right clicks, I think. He the tower is going to help out the dispersion. In treads and then had a dagger in three seconds. He might go oh back in. Dagger Yo. is online. No. Level four dagger. He's going for it. Gonna get called. There's TP support for Alliance coming in now. Looks like Ember Spear is gonna help finish him off a little bit too late on the ult from Handskin, but they might be able to get Shad either way. Inkswell is gonna be on two oh, heroes. No. This is a tier two dive at minute 12. And they're gonna find three heroes and no one will die on. It was on cooldown for Ursa or something? It, it was. So. It was there. It was, okay. yeah. Uh, but, like. Obviously, I'm painting it very black and white. Like, Spectre has always been able to join fights, but it's really... I think the pro players have just got a lot better at utilizing that small advantage to turn it into something big. Looks like Handskin is going to be a sacrificial lamb here for a long time. And they have levels on Grim to make Ember strong. He has four levels in Inkswell. I do like this. This is a really good roast job. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. They definitely needed it. But Aegis now on Nico, baby. They can get ultra aggressive if they want. Blink Dagger is almost there for S4, so they might just wait for that. Or not. Grimstroke presents himself. Uh, I guess take it. Or maybe the princess is going to walk into it. Oh, Shad. He does smoke. have the relic, so this would not be the worst death, honestly. They're going to blink in. Do they even kill him? Oh. Uh, it's going to be close. Calling Blade. Oh! He jaunts to another illusion. He got cursed mid. And he gets cursed mid. FNG okay, is on dead. the way as well, and yeah, he's he's super dead. But again, he just bought his relic. It was definitely better than dying one minute ago. I agree. Dyer's middle tower is under S4, attack. gonna show himself. Uh, yeah, that's... A he's dead. Okay. That's a Necro 3, no several more. boars, lots of units. Including new he didn't have any vision in the area, but he went well ahead of his team to purchase some info there. Are they gonna use it correctly, though, Nico? Nico, baby, Telekinesis. They know that Winter's Curse is on cooldown right now. Oh no, the black hole got canceled by silence. Oh, oh this is bad. Well, we'll see Inkswell now onto FNG. That's going to be an easy cleanup for Viking as the Aegis is gone, it sounds like. And Nico maybe continue to get his mana drain. Has to pop his ult. The Yule oh, they come through now. He is that the black hole? Yeah, yeah he stopped hole. his Nothing. stolen black hole. Okay. Nico baby getting saved for now, but. Celery just blows him up. Paint them and stop key spells like Black Hole, or he can stop Requiem wind up. It's, uh, it's good. Oh, FNG? AFK in mid? Yeah, he is uh, <laughs> literally just standing there. And I guess that cost him his life. So another kill going the way of Viking, and we are on Radiance Watch for Shad. He is about 400 away from finishing Hans that bad boy bottom. bottom lane. Lord. Radiance bottom tower Roar is into under death. For that lane. Is under attack. See FNG here in the bottom oh, lane, no. and Ember's gonna start off his normal combo with the Necro units coming very slowly. It's gonna be a painful, slow death for FNG. Likely the tier two half HP right now. Handskin does have curse available to him. It's like no fight will. Start thinking. Oh, S4 actually does initiate onto Boom, or is it the other way around? Boom. Has his Yules available. RMS is relatively close by. Does have the Aether Lens as well. There's the Telekinesis. They actually <laughs> stole Arctic Burn, making things even more annoying. Into He has a call now. I'd love to see this. Please, show us everything you got, RMS. I mean, the net worth is basically even between Spectre and Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend, it feels very reliant on getting his ult off in the yeah. 
Haunt has useful bottom lane on Haunt. Nico Baby is all alone. Nobody's even remotely close to him. Right. Did require a Roar and a Necro 3, but they will be mega happy with that. It's not looking good for Alliance this game. This can end really, really badly for Alliance. They gotta be so careful. Off. Toby does have Roar, but he is super tanky. Necro 3 and Greaves. Looks like the lift on the axe into the Grim Ult. Shadow Fiend. Double Roar. He's off his first Requiem, but yeah, the double Roar comes in tow. And FNG already extremely low. Can he get off his Black Hole at all right now? And it looks like he will just spill immediately. So the first casualty, there's the Winter's Curse. Ember Spirit taking a lot of damage. Lamp finally able to get off a Requiem of Souls. But boom, we'll just shut him off. Walk away. Oh, he Nico almost baby. lived to Chris of Stone. He's going to turn things on to Boom, but there's the Yule's counter again. A four for one, make it a team wipe. And all they lose is Rubik, not even remotely close these fights. It's not, there's not like, much to say, it's just not worked. I mean, I can see it definitely working if there's no Rubik, right? That's a completely different thing. That's why you always see the enchanted counter to be the master. But... Enigma, and of course Shadow yep. is passive. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Enigma up in 15 seconds still has his black hole. I mean, I think at this stage it just has to be on the Rubik, and then you just can't get stunned or signed by anybody else. It's very difficult to actually execute this. But there's the initiation. Grimstroke double. Beastmaster roar again. Limp will actually get. I actually can't tell if that was the death requiem. Almost. He got it off. He got it off. So that but was it died in the same second. Essentially. <laughs> Radiant structures but not really doing that much other than mitigating a little bit of damage here. And this will likely be the GG push, but you never know. Wow, look at that lift range. Jesus, that's so insane. FNG blown up. Chad still has the Aegis, so not too worried about this. Buyback for two heroes on Alliance now. Nico Baby is already expended in Rage. Might have to go back and heal. As a result, Shad will just finish off this tower at the very least. See if they end up continuing this or not. Winter's Curse onto Ember alone. Nobody was near him. Really good positioning from Viking. That's a wasted, big ulti wasted. And Enigma, that is a dieback. Didn't even get to use Black Hole. Things are just getting worse and worse for alliances. They are crumbling in this game, too. Ex we were expecting three games, especially after that game one, but this has been all Viking. For sure. If you asked me before the series, who, if it was a 2-0, who I thought would 2-0, I would have said Bike, and, and they looked so good against Secret. It's, it's no it's no coincidence that they're looking good today as well. This team is playing sick Dota right now, and... They've been here so long, Grim's ult is up again! <laughs> double roar! And a double roar again! Are you serious? I didn't even realize didn't they were that, that close. Yet. Yeah, they're just showing off right now. Right, I need to look at the cooldowns here. Let's see. So, Soulbind is 75 seconds at level 2. I to this Rubik. Rubik was such... How late was Rubik picked? Remember? Second pick. Okay, so it wasn't like... This. First pick Beastmaster, then it was Enigma Wyvern, and then it was Rubik. There's the Haunt. This could be the last fight. He has to Black Hole. Well he has to finally do it. Oh my god, he gets so up for a little bit, but the damage has already been done. It's a 2 for nothing. And okay. a stolen Black Hole onto the Shadow Friend. And that is going to be four dead in favor of Viking as GG finally called. GG wrong. <laughs> is that what you said? Yeah, Spectre has a voice line that's wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Well, that was a mega yeah. stomp.